Inside Racing is brought to you by Dunlop. One, two, three. Hello, Hello and welcome, welcome to, to the 24 Hour Le Mans. Bienvenue chez les 24 Heures du Mans. 24 Minutes, brother! <laughs> Viva Mexico! Addictive, daring, deified, and also a bit way out. The Le Mans 24 Hour Race. Audi! Audi! Audi, Peugeot. <laughs> Audi, sorry. And with a hardcore fan or ad hoc visitor, there are two things they all love. The speed and the noise. It's the beauty here. That's what it's all about here on the South, amidst 250,000 people, living legends included. I haven't been to Le Mans since 1967. So it's a wonderful reunion for me to come back and see one of the great races in the world. Also legendary, the Mazda 787B, the winning car in 1991. On the 11th of June, ahead of the start of the race, its Wankel engine roared away once more. The driver, too, was the same as 20 years ago. The show was an act of solidarity with the victims of the tsunami disaster in Japan. The sole Japanese driver at Le Mans was Shinji Nakano. He was looking ahead to his start on the 11th of June with mixed feelings, as he explained to Inside Racing. 11th of June is exactly the three months after the earthquake we had in Japan. I want all the European people once again think about Japan. Japan is still in a difficult situation. We need more help from all you guys. I want to share this feeling. That's why I put some stickers on the car. Yeah, Oak Racing gave me space to put the stickers on it, which is really good thanks to the team. Japan said thanks, and Oak Racing were putting their faith in Shinji Nakano. He'd previously driven in Formula One and IndyCar. This was now his fourth Le Mans. The independent team was thus relying clearly on experience. There's more on this team, by the way, later in Faces. First, it's off to the race at the speed of sound. It's a long race, 24 hours, a lot can happen. The flying start gets the 79th running of this long distance classic underway. 56 cars sharing the 13.6 kilometer asphalt track. Drivers from 21 countries in prototypes and GT cars, taking turns behind the wheel in teams of three. Raging up front, the eternal duel, Audi versus Peugeot. One overtaking maneuver after another, all in dense traffic, precision work. But then, near disaster strikes, Alan McNeish is hit and loses control of his Audi. The monocoque saves him and he's unhurt. Darkness sees the start of the toughest phase of the race. No more than narrow cones of light show the way, with drivers partly steering by instinct. In this GT car, you're always having to, uh, let's say, deal with the traffic and the prototypes. And um, to be honest, it's really hard for us. And especially in the dark, you do not know how close they are. So uh, it puts you on the edge all the time. Even at night, the prototypes go through some sections of the circuit at 300 kilometers per hour. The slower GT cars present a major hazard. Mike Rockefeller's Audi tears into the barrier at 270. As if by a miracle, he too is uninjured. After two hours under the safety car, come a further 15 hours, brakes included. Hi, I'm Augusto Farfus. Welcome to my container, to our container actually. Here's where me and York spend our night during the race. Actually, it's quite small. Uh, it's not really quiet because it's exactly in the middle of the circuit, in the heart of the circuit, we have two beds, we have a toilet uh, to have a little shower. Uh, it's not, let's say, a five-star hotel, but it's more than enough. Uh, we have our overall, our race kit here ready. Uh, everything we need, it's easy, easy to reach, easy to get, to have a window to see how the weather is going. So actually, this is my place. Do the drivers actually manage to get any sleep, or is that impossible? You have a, a break in between the stints of uh, altogether probably three hours 
and out of these three hours you have uh, one and a half where you can really sleep. Uh, but you cannot, I mean, you know your car is racing, you can hear the people talking, you can hear the car passing, so you want to know what's going on. And then you don't have, you don't sleep, you don't really recover. Uh, that's why it's an endurance race, because you need really endurance power to get to the end and be able to finish the race in a good condition. Before the race ends, the rain guard strikes. Fine drizzle makes the track slippery. A racking of brains begins. Which tyres are right for these conditions? Will the slicks still have enough grip? Would intermediates or wets be better? BMW have the low tread Dunlop intermediates at the ready, but who ultimately decides? This is the Fahrer, der mit dem Auto fährt. That's the driver who's driving the car. He knows what's happening on the circuit. Then there are also the people on the pit lane wall who simply know how to react in these situations and can read the track. In such situations, nobody can say I got everything right today. You sometimes need a bit of luck too. At BMW, they stick with Dunlop slicks. And that turns out to be right, for the rain doesn't last long. The checkered flag gets waved first for Audi, despite two retirements, a 10th title in 13 years. Painful for Peugeot. BMW, by contrast, can smile. A podium place for the Bavarians. Fassler, Lotterer and Trelleuier win for Audi in the LMP1 class. BMW with Pio, Werner and Han take bronze in the GTE Pro class. We were aiming to do a bit better, but it was simply not our day for finishing right at the top. We're nevertheless very pleased to be on the podium. Addicted, daring, deified, and also a bit way out. The Le Mans 24-hour race in 2011, more dramatic than ever. Inside Racing was brought to you by Dunlop.